In this video, I use the Warcolor Nostalgia 94 range on a classic Yarrick miniature. I'll be showing you all of the colours and going over how well they apply and um, what I think of them. So let's just go straight to the desk. So here I have Commissar Yarrick from the second edition of Warhammer 40,000. And I um, primed him with a light grey primer and just went over a wraith bone. And yeah, let's start. We'll use the Chaos Black. So, this is the first time I've ever used any of these paints. Um, black seems like a good one to start with. I've got a little old palette thing here. Giving it a shake. And let's start layering on that black so obviously I can't really judge too much with a black paint as you would expect it to cover quite nicely over this and yeah it feels nice it's going to be interesting when we get onto the yellows I'll try and not get too much black on the areas that I want to be yellow now I won't strictly use this paint line on Yarrick, as there's only a few colours available at the moment, but I will use as many as I can get away with. So let's take it from one extreme to another with some sunburst yellow. I think you can get it out. There we go. This one already, it looks a bit thinner than the black. Yellows and oranges are a bit of a bit of a pain to make paint wise. Very rare you'll find some really really good ones. You can see straight away. Well, I don't know if you can see straight away, um depending on how good the camera quality is, but this definitely will need another couple of coats. Um I did shake it. I wonder if I need to shake it even more. So I've given it a bit more of a shake, and yeah, the paint on the palette now after the uh, bigger shake um, seems a little bit less watery, but again, it's still quite thin. Now, um, I wouldn't say that's a bad thing. I like paints to be this consistency. If I was using a GW paint, I'd probably water it down to this consistency anyway, so that's not necessarily a bad thing at all. But it'll certainly need a few coats to go over all these yellow areas. Um, normally I probably wouldn't even paint the yellow at this stage, because there's a lot of sort of little trim and stuff. But I wanted to show off a lighter colour straight after using the black. So yeah, I'll give that a few coats and we'll see what other colours we've got. So here's how he's looking so far and you can see the yellow is nice and bright. Obviously I'll be adding washes and highlights and whatnot later on but we'll just get all the base coats down with these paints. We've got some blood red next. I'll chuck that over here. This one certainly looks a lot thicker. Mm, I don't know that one. Oh, <laughs> I weren't talking to you. And yeah, I'll um, paint I mean, some metal areas in here as well. And I know he has this nice sort of red to orange gradient that I'll try and replicate, but for now we'll just get the base coat down. So you can see how that goes on. It's probably going to need a couple of coats for sure. So it's nice that it's, it's not as thin as the yellow, but it's still quite a nice consistency. So yeah, so far they've all been 
pretty nice to work with straight out of the pot. Okay, so here's how he's looking. He's got a little bit. So one thing I don't like about metal miniatures is you get this little chipping every now and then, so you have to go over certain areas just from handling it. Really, I should use a paint and handle, so it's my fault really. I've got a lot of miniatures on paint and handles at the moment for other projects. Anyway, let's use a metallic. We've got mithril silver, so this is a very light silver. Not a silver I would um, use, really. For this, I would start with a darker silver and work my way up um, in brightness, but for purposes of testing these paints out, I'm going to give it a go. See how it goes over black. I'm not too bad, I'll need a couple of coats, but that's pretty good for going over black. I mean, really, these old paints, you have to sort of just consider them as layer paints, because that's essentially what they all were. There was no base paints, foundation paints, layer paints, etc. Back in those days, they were just paints. Um, but yeah, as I said, I'd normally use a darker silver here, but I'll go over it all with a wash anyway, which will darken it down, and then I'll use the mithril silver for highlights. So next up, I'm going to take some of the bronzed flesh. and use it to paint his face. Again, just going straight from a pot here as it's nice and thin. I'll try not to get some on that hat, but always harder when you're trying to paint on camera. Let us try. We will try the wash. So we get one wash with it, which is the flesh wash. Okay, so I've got some of the flesh wash here. It's lighter than I remember. Maybe I'm just used to the darker flesh washes that we've had over the years since. It goes on quite nice. You certainly just feel like using GW shades for sure. So I didn't actually paint, I've left a wraith bone just on this thing here, but I will, um, some of the other skulls on that I will go over with some bone colour. And then I'll put the wash over them as well. And um, there's no bleached bone or anything like that in this set. Hopefully it's one they'll do in the future. So... Yeah, so there will be some Citadel paints used on this miniature, as I said earlier. Um, there are a couple more colours from this set still to use. Um, I won't use the Enchanted Blue, as there's not really any blue on him, but I will use um, some Skull White, so I might as well go straight in with that right now. So it's a big test to see what the whites are like. Whites and yellows and oranges I find are good colours to test a paint range with because not everyone gets them right. It's going to be hard to see um, how well this actually goes on because it's going on a sort of light grey colour anyway. No, but it seems quite nice. Very thin, so I'll need a few coats to really build up. Then I'm going to take one colour that I'm very excited for. Uh, Serpent bite leather. <laughs> Snake bite leather. I'm just going to paint his shoes with this. And we do have some areas that are green, so we're taking Goblin Green. And considering how um, 
not all popular Goblin Green is, especially with um, a lot of the retro gamers. It's surprising that GW don't have a sort of equivalent. I'm sure they've got greens that are close. They have a lot of greens in their range, to be fair. But yeah, like Goblin Green. And I'm also going to paint the base with it as well. And there's a little bit on the front there as well. So here he is with all the base coats. So yeah, not looking much at the moment. But I will get him finished. I'll do the rest of him off camera because they'll just be using normal Citadel paints and washes. So this video is all about the war colours. And what I will say is they are nice paints. I really like them. I like the bottles. They're really nice struggle bottles. A really nice lid. I'll just put them down for a second. It's very sort of fine nozzle. Um, really nice. Yeah, and the paints themselves, very good consistency. They're not too thick, not too thin. They do need a little bit of a shake, but that's just stand for paints. So yeah, really like them. And of course, classic colours that someone my age grew up with. And I look forward to more of them. Um, one thing we did get was this Goblin Green marker. And I don't know, I just can't get on with it. Um, this took a little while. Although it might be alright now. So basically, when I first got it, it says to do like a pump action to get the paint out, and you have to sort of keep going like that, and that just wasn't doing it, but after leaving it for a little while, um, the paint has decided to come to the sponge, and yeah, I guess you use it for painting base, uh, the rims of the bases, but you do have to sort of give it a push to get the paint out, so it's not the best thing to use, it's a bit gimmicky I suppose, um, but I will try it out maybe at some point, um, but yeah, I don't think it's needed, it's quite easy just to paint a base rim. But, you know, it's worth trying these things. But yeah, I think I ended up using every colour. I even used a bit of a blue in his eye lens there. And um, lastly, before I just get him painted, I just want to talk about the wash. Because, um, you notice on the face, that's just sat really nicely in the recesses. So I was really impressed with the wash. And I look forward to using more of the paints and washes that they bring out from this range in the future. So... Yeah, by the power of the video, I will get this guy finished. And here he is. So, I wanted to get this video out um, as quick as possible, so I didn't spend too much time on him. Gave him some washes and that. Um, I'll probably come back in the future because some highlights. Um, you can see the pole's a little bit bent, and it's getting a bit scratched up already, so I'll have to just repaint on there. And Yeah, definitely going to have to varnish him. Um, it was the first metal miniature I've painted for a long time, actually. Um, I hate all the little chips and stuff you get on them, but... Yeah, really happy with how he's turned out, considering it was a very quick, quick job. But, yeah, I, I like these paints. They're very nice, as I said before, straight out of the pot. It's nice to use the classic colours. The Goblin Green looks really nice. And I actually been... I have another miniature here, because I've been using the Duncan Rhodes paints quite a lot. So this is his green... See on the base rim, so very similar. So if you've got the two thin coats paints already from Wave One, then you already got a pretty suitable Goblin Green alternative. But it's still nice, and yeah, as I said, the watch was really good. So, so yeah, all well, what's left to say is thank you so much for watching, and feel free to give a video a like if you enjoyed this little review. And um, yeah, feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so already as well. And we really appreciate everyone who subscribes to the channel and everyone who watches and likes the videos. Um, it's really awesome. So yeah, thank you so much for watching again. And I'll see you all in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click 